Hello students today we are going to discuss a very much clinically important topic venous drainage of lower limb venous drainage of lower limb is of immense clinical and surgical importance why the venous drainage of the lower limb is drained against the gravity that is one thing you have to know and however there are number of factors which help the drainage of venous blood Uh, which facilitates its drainage uh, by against the gravity into the inferior vena cava so if these factors fail to help the drainage the stagnation of the venous blood in the superficial veins cause varicose veins means abnormal dilatation and tortuosity of the veins are called as varicosity so it results in varicose veins and in the deep veins lead to deep vein thrombosis so let's see the factors helping the venous drainage of lower limb the factors causing the venous drainage are first thing is the contraction of calf muscles so the calf muscles so we can see here in this image here is the calf muscle so because of the contraction of the calf muscles which is the chief factor which uh, squeezes the blood upwards Uh, along the deep veins so one thing you have to note here the calf muscles that is the reason called as peripheral heart the calf pump is considered as peripheral heart transmitted pulsations from the adjacent arteries so adjacent arteries also because of pulsations they pump the venous blood because these veins are usually accompanied by the arteries we know the arteries pulse it so when they pulse it they squeeze the adjacent veins and presence of valves so these veins contain valves and also the in valves in the perforating veins prevent the reflex of blood into the superficial veins during contraction of calf muscle so here are the valves and we can see the valves in the perforating veins also which prevents regurgitation of blood back into superficial veins and next factor which causes increases the venous return from the lower limb is because of negative intrathoracic pressure negative intrathoracic pressure becomes more negative during the inspiration and during yawning and in recumbent position that is uh, in vis attagogo is produced by the contraction of the heart and suction uh, against the diaphragm so that is also an increased venous return due to negative intrathoracic pressure so let us classify the veins of lower limb lower limb anatomically we can and functionally we can classify into three types the three varieties are superficial veins deep veins and perforating veins the superficial veins es uh, essentially include the great and small saphenous veins so here in this image we can see the great saphenous vein great saphenous vein and from the posterior side of the leg there is a short saphenous vein also which we would discuss little later and which present uh, represent the preaxial and postaxial so great saphenous vein is the preaxial vein whereas the short saphenous vein is the postaxial vein and these uh, veins axial veins are determine the development of lower limb so they lie in the superficial fascia these superficial veins we can see they lie within the superficial fascia of the uh, lower limb and uh, like it is within the superficial fascia on the surface of deep fascia and are thick walled because of the presence of smooth muscles so these veins are little thicker because they contain smooth muscles and these veins possesses valves which are more numerous in the distal part than the proximal part so if you see in the distal part here is this is the distal portion this is the proximal portion so in the distal portion we see numerous valves compared to the proximal part of great saphenous vein a large proportion of their blood is drained into deep veins so large proportion of the superficial veins 
they drain into the deep veins which include anterior tibial posterior tibial peroneal popliteal and femoral veins so these are the deep veins so they drain into these veins and these deep veins they are surround and supported by powerful muscles they possesses more valves so the deep veins possesses more valves so here is the schematic picture to showing three varieties of veins superficial veins superficial are grad saphenous and short saphenous veins and these are the deep veins and we can see these communicating veins which are called as perforators so these are perforators so the deep veins are present within the muscles the contraction of the muscles causes the movement of blood and the deep veins contain more number of valves so the deep veins accompany the arteries and below the knee they are arranged in pair of vena comitantes so below the knee these veins are not single they are double present on each side on either side of the arteries which are called as vena comitantes which are present along the arteries but above the knee they form a single vein so above the knee they are present as a single vein along the arteries and below the uh, knee these veins are like vena comitantes all the veins uh, from the muscles draining into deep veins also possesses valves except those in the soleus only veins which are present inside the soleus muscle doesn't possess valves rest of the veins you can identify the valves they are present so let's talk about perforators vein so perforators are perforating veins pierce the deep vein fascia and connect the superficial veins to the deep veins their valves permit only one way of flow so here these are perforators which are between the superficial and deep veins and we can see the valve here which allow only unidirectional flow of uh, blood if you see the perforators they are about five perforators along the great saphenous vein and one perforator along the small saphenous vein the venous blood of the thigh and the leg flows from the superficial to deep veins and it is being directed by the valves of these perforating veins however in foot the venous blood flows from the deep veins into the sole to the superficial veins on the dorsum of the foot so that thing you have to note here except the foot the rest everywhere the superficial venous blood transferred into the deep veins whereas in the sole uh, the deeper veins drain into superficial veins so let us discuss about the great saphenous vein so as the name suggests it is a very long vein that is the reason it is called great saphenous vein which lies in the superficial fascia and it is easily seen in mainly complexion people the great saphenous vein is the longest vein of the body and represents the preaxial vein so it represents the preaxial vein of the lower limb it is also called as long saphenous vein so great saphenous is also called as long saphenous vein let's see the origin of great saphenous vein it gets origin from medial end of dorsal venous arch of the foot so this is the dorsal venous arch so from the medial end of the dorsal venous arch it continues to form and finally we can see its termination it terminates into femoral vein by piercing the cribriform fascia so it terminates into femoral vein so let's see its course the great saphenous vein arises from the medial end of dorsal venous arch of the foot and runs upwards in front of the medial malleolus so it runs upwards in front of the medial uh, malleolus on the medial side of the ankle then it passes along the medial side of the leg behind the knee so we can see it is going behind the knee here here it is present in front of the medial malleolus so later it inclines forwards in the thigh so we can see it is inclining forwards in the thigh upwards and forwards 
and uh, it reaches the saphenous opening this opening is called as saphenous opening so after piercing the cribriform fascia it drains into femoral vein so it contains 10 to 15 valves to prevent the back flow of venous blood so it contains uh, approximately around 10 to 15 valves which prevents the back flow of venous blood and one valve always present at safno femoral junction so at the site of opening where it opens into the femoral vein one valve is always present so connected to the deep veins by perforate is also connected to the deep veins by perforating veins so let's see about the perforators which are associated with the great safnus vein there are three perforators above the ankle which are uh, named as upper middle and lower and there is one perforator which is below the knee and the other one uh, at, at the adductor canal almost near the adductor canal so these are the perforators which are connecting the great safnus vein with the deep veins tributaries of great safnus vein at the commencement so when it gets origin from the medial dorsal venous arch so it has got a tributary called as medial marginal vein from sole so the tributaries are medial marginal vein and just below the knee posterior arch vein an anterior vein of leg and then vein from calf so these are the veins just present below the knee in the thigh uh, the tributaries are accessory saphenous vein so in the thigh accessory saphenous vein anterior cutaneous vein of thigh then just before piercing the cribriform fascia means just piercing in the saphenous opening near the saphenous opening it gives the tributaries which are along the superficial branches of femoral artery these tributaries are superficial external pudendal vein I am writing short forms superficial external pudendal vein then superficial epigastric vein superficial epigastric vein and the vein uh, one more vein is the superficial circumflex iliac vein so these are the veins which are the tributaries present just before piercing the cribriform fascia so just before termination it also gives one more a uh, tributary called as deep external pudendal deep external pudendal vein so we have got superficial external pudendal superficial epigastric vein superficial circumflex iliac vein and deep external pudendal veins let's talk about the valves of great saphenous vein so there are around 10 to 20 i said around 10 to 15 or 10 to 20 the number of valves will vary from individual to individual but uh, approximately we can say around 10 to 20 valves are present in the great saphenous vein out of which the location of two uh, valves two valves needs special mention one valve lies just before it pierces the cribriform fascia and the other one which lies at the junction of saphenofemoral that is at the junction between the saphenous vein and the femoral vein which is called as saphenofemoral valve so it just before its termination into the femoral vein so these two valves are very important saphenofemoral valve is of great functional significance because it lies about 3.5 to 4 centimeters infralateral to pubic tubercle and it is about in about 80 percent of the individuals the external iliac vein possess a valve which protects the saphenofemoral valve against high venous pressure the remaining 20% of the cases who do not have valve this valve 
becomes the victim of high venous pressure and develop uh, varicose vein and which commences at the sapro-femoral junction and gradually extended downwards so gradually it extends downwards so this is the clinical importance of saphenofemoral valve and also the valve present in external iliac valve so one thing i'll repeat 80% of the people will have external iliac valve so if the 20% of the people doesn't have this valve if that valve is absent what happens there will be more venous pressure in the venous blood that is the great saphenous vein so more uh, uh, pressure is given upon the saphenofemoral vein leading to varicosity so that is the clinical importance of this valve surface marking of the great saphenous vein so if you start drawing the great saphenous vein at the ankle it lies 2.5 cm anterior to the medial malleolus so here is approximately medial malleolus so 2.5 cm anterior to the medial malleolus in the leg it ascends by crossing the medial surface of the medial border of tibia so it crescents by crossing the medial surface here it is 2 point cent medial surface and medial border of tibia it crosses at the knee it lies about a hand's breadth posterior to the medial margin of patella so here is the patella so almost a hand breadth from the patella and on the medial it uh, it ascends further into the thigh in the thigh it ascends obliquely on the medial aspect of the thigh to reach the uh, cribriform fascia that is the saphenous opening so the saphenous opening usually it lies 3.5 to 4 cm so this opening is the saphenous opening which lies 3.5 to 4 cm okay infralateral to pubic tubercle so here is the pubic tubercle so just infralateral to pubic tubercle 3.5 to 4 cm so that is how we draw the surface marking of great saphenous vein so let's talk about the applied anatomy grafting of great saphenous vein it is used in coronary artery bypass graft we can say it as c a b g so coronary artery bypass graft so the vein is reversed so that the valves do not block the passage of blood next about the veiny section of great saphenous vein the great saphenous vein in front of the medial malleolus of the ankle it is the most preferred site for veiny section that is to cut down in emergency situation when the superficial veins elsewhere in the body is collapsed and invisible to insert the cannula for prolonged administration of intravenous fluid so that is the site for veiny section in emergency purposes so one thing uh, we have to you have to note that in front of the medial malleolus saphenous nerve lies just in front of the vein so during the cut down of uh, vein during veiny section so what happens the saphenous nerve should be recognized and avoid its injury so that is one thing you have to note here okay next after great saphenous vein we will move on to short saphenous vein or small saphenous vein small saphenous vein it is formed below and behind the lateral malleolus by the union of lateral end of dorsal venous arch so lateral end of the dorsal venous arch continues as small saphenous vein and the lateral dorsal digital vein of the little toe so that continues as small saphenous vein and it runs upwards behind the lateral malleolus along the lateral edge of tendocalcaneus so here is the lateral malleolus so here is the tendocalcaneus so along the lateral edge of tendocalcaneus 
it runs upwards on the posterior side of the leg and here the short saphenous vein is accompanied by sural nerve so it is accompanied by a cutaneous nerve called as sural nerve so this thing you have to note down and therefore it runs in the middle of the back of the leg pierces the deep fascia and undergoes a subfacial course so you can see here it pierces the deep fascia at this side and further it undergoes a, a subfacial course and between the two heads of gastrocnemius so these are the two heads of gastrocnemius here uh, until it reaches the middle of the popliteal fossa and here it after reaching the popliteal fossa it turns upwards to terminate in the popliteal vein so finally it terminates in popliteal vein so the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve accompanies the upper part of the vein while passing from deep to superficial so posterior cutaneous nerve also accompanies next is the small saphenous vein usually contains around 7 to 13 valves small saphenous vein 7 to 13 valves it contains so let's talk about the varicose veins or varicose ulcers which we observe in the lower limb so when the veins become dilated and taut to us uh, they are called as varicose veins the superficial veins of the lower limb are commonly become varicose due to incompetency of valves if the valves stop functioning it results in the uh, incompetency of valves and blood starts pooling causing varicosity following prolonged uh, standing for example uh, bus conductors traffic police personnel nurses who stand for a prolonged time in them varicosity is very common incompetency of valves in the perforating veins if the valves in the perforating veins become incompetent the defective vein become high pressure uh, leaks and during muscular contraction whereby the high pressure of the deep veins is transmitted to the superficial veins so it as a result the superficial veins become dilated and taut to us causing varicosity so incompetence of the valves at the termination of superficial veins for example we have just discussed about the saphno femoral vein which is present at the saphno femoral junction if this vein becomes incompetent uh, the great saphenous vein becomes taut to us the varicosity commences from the saphno femoral junction and extends gradually downwards the dilatation of the superficial veins and gradual degeneration of the valves leads to varicose ulcers so if there is a dilatation of veins and if there is ulcers within the veins it is called as varicose ulcers how to recognize the site of incompetent valves the clinicians recognize the site of incompetent valves by following two sets one is the trendelberg test and the second test is the perth test which is also called as tourniquet test so these two tests are only super, uh, test for the superficial veins and perforators can be tested but not uh, deep veins that is the varicosity of the deep veins cannot be tested with these two tests so let's see about the trendelberg test so the patient is asked to lie down and the veins are emptied by raising the lower limb and stroking the varicose veins proximally so now the pressure is applied with the thumb at the saphno femoral junction so and the patient is asked to stand up quickly after putting pressure so to test the superficial veins the pressure is released if the varicose veins are filled quickly from above it indicates that there is an incompetency of superficial veins and test is positive if the veins are not filled the test is negative then it is to test the perforator veins it is not due to superficial now we have to test the perforator veins so the pressure at the saphno femoral junction is not released but maintained for about a minute and gradual filling of the superficial vein indicates the incompetency of the valves of perforating veins so allowing the blood from the deep to superficial veins and test is positive 
so that is about the trendelberg test let's see about perth's test perth's test is otherwise called as tourniquet test it is uh, employed to test the incompetence of deep veins the tourniquet test is tied uh, around the upper part of the thigh and it is tight enough to occlude the supraphnous vein and uh, but not the femoral vein so the patient is asked to do gentle exercise like walking quickly for a while and when the tourniquet is in place and if the perforating and the deep veins are normal then the varicose veins will shrink and whereas if they are blocked the varicose veins become more distended so that is the, the test we do for uh, deep veins and perforators perforators we already discussed these veins are the communicating venous channels between the superficial veins and the deep veins and these veins are called perforators because they perforate the deep fascia they pierce the deep fascia that's why they are called as perforator veins the perforators are classified into two types again indirect perforators and direct perforators indirect perforators means they connect the superficial and the deep veins through muscular veins so here is a schematic picture to show the indirect perforators other side this is the image of direct perforators so direct perforators they connect the superficial and deep veins directly so they doesn't pass through any muscle and all so location of the perforators the position of five or six perforators is fairly constant so let us discuss the location so let's talk about the perforator which is present in the adductor canal it connects the great saphenous vein with the femoral vein in the lower part of the adductor canal or hunter's canal so this perforator is otherwise called as hunterian perforator next is the second constant perforator is present at the knee which is called as a knee perforator or boyd's perforator it connects the great saphenous vein with the posterior tibial vein just below the knee close to the medial border of the tibia next is the lateral ankle perforator it communicates the short saphenous vein with the peroneal vein it is situated at the junction of the middle of lower third of the leg so that is about the lateral ankle perforator the fourth perforator there are three medial uh, ankle perforators which we can together consider here which are called as the perforators of cocket and these are situated close to the medial border and lower third of the tibia between the medial malleolus and mid calf and connects the great saphenous vein with the posterior tibial veins uh, so we can divide into three upper middle and the lower upper medial ankle perforators it lies at the junction of middle and the lower third of the leg middle or the medial ankle perforator it lies between the 4 cm above the medial malleolus then the lower medial ankle perforator it lies posterior inferior to the medial malleolus so these three medial ankle perforators join with one another by series of venous arcades to form posterior arch vein that is about the superficial veins and the deep, uh, perforators next we shall do with the deep veins the deep veins of the leg lies in a tight facial compartment along the arteries so the major deep veins of the limb are the deep veins of the sole which are the medial and lateral plantar veins then vena comitantis accompanying the dorsal pedis artery anterior tibial artery and posterior tibial artery so vena comitantis are the double veins which are present on the either side of the these arteries next the third vein which is a deeper vein is the popliteal vein and the fourth important vein is the femoral vein femoral vein is the upward continuation of the popliteal vein at the adductor hiatus and thus it begins at the lower end of adductor canal it ascends in the adductor canal and femoral triangle where after traversing the intermediate compartment of femoral sheath it continues as the external iliac vein behind the inguinal ligament just uh, medial to the mid inguinal points 
if we see the tributaries of the femoral vein great great saphenous vein which is the longest tributary profunda femoris vein which is the deeper vein drains the posterior compartment and anterior compartment of the thigh and medial and lateral circumflex veins deep external pudendal vein direct muscular tributaries and uh, puncturing or the cannula of the femoral vein so if the femoral vein is preferred vein for intravenous infusions in infants and children and in patients with peripheral circulatory failure femoral vein is also used for inserting a catheter into the right atrial chamber and right ventricle to collect the blood sample or to record the pressure to reach the pulmonary arteries and it is also route to the right ventricle so how it is to the right ventricle first we will insert in um, the catheter into the femoral vein then into the external iliac it enters into the common iliac vein from common in iliac vein to inferior vena cava from inferior vena cava into the right atrium of the heart and finally from right atrium to right ventricle of the heart so calf muscles which are considered as the peripheral heart so let's talk about it in upright position the venous return from the lower limb occurs against the gravity and depends largely on the contraction of calf muscles therefore these muscles are termed as calf pump or peripheral heart so the soleus muscle contains the venous uh, sinuses filled with the blood and when the soleus muscle contracts it pumps the blood from its ve uh, large venous sinuses into the deep veins and then it is relaxed it sucks the blood from the superficial veins so the vein venous sinuses within the uh, soleus will refill again so the unidirectional flow of blood is maintained by the valves in perforators hence the soleus sometimes termed as peripheral heart of the body next the soleal sinuses are the common sites for thrombosis and source of pulmonary embolism in sedentary individuals and next condition is the phlebitis phlebitis means inflammation of the vein is called as phlebitis and it is caused by the blood clot in uh, which is called as thrombophlebitis if it is due to the blood clot it is called thrombophlebitis and uh, thrombophlebitis of soleal sinus may be dangerous because the spread of infection from here may damage the valves in the perforators dvt deep vein thrombosis the veins from the muscles draining into the deep veins have valves except those in the soleus so which are arranged from the venous sinuses so the blood flow is sluggish in the soleal sinuses particularly when the muscles are put at, put to rest so prolonged rest in the bed for, by some patients after surgery is unwise because it may develop deep vein thrombosis which may culminate into life threatening complications like pulmonary embolism so these are the clinical aspects of uh, venous drainage of lower limb so by this we wind up the venous drainage of lower limb thank you